Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. Today is a very special day because right here in front of me, in this beautiful protective case, I have the brand new Dromax 360 portable charging station from our good friends at Energen. Now if you've watched the channel at all, you know I've reviewed their products in the past and I'm a big fan of this company. I did a review on the M10 which was the Mavic charger, I have a P40 and an A40 that I'm going to review that are Phantom chargers and more universal chargers, but this Dromax 360 is different from all those other chargers because all of those are fairly specific on what kind of batteries they charge. The Drone Max 360 is really the everything charger. So I heard about this product, I guess about six or seven months ago, contacted the company. They sent me some really early preliminary information and I did a clip on what I thought the thing would turn out to be. We took a trip to Vegas a couple of months back to go to CES. They actually had this in their booth at the time. It was a prototype. So I did an interview with the company and talked about the product and what it was going to turn into. And I pleaded with them to send me a unit as soon as it was ready. So here it is. Now, this is pre-production. It's not even on the market yet. And we got a chance to take it out in the field and test it. Now, I beat this thing up over the last week and a half out in the field, charging every manner of portable product that I could bring out there and try and charge. And I couldn't find anything that I couldn't charge with this. So I'm going to do this clip in a couple of different ways. First, I'll do sort of an unboxing with it. I don't even have a box. It came in this. It's so new and so pre-release that there isn't even a physical box for it yet, but I'll tear this thing open and show you what comes with it. But more importantly, I want to give you some impressions on what I've charged with it, how long it takes, how well it works out in the field, and a couple of tips and tricks that I figured out along the way that will allow you to charge pretty much anything you take with you. So stay tuned, and I'll get into it in a minute. I'll do the unboxing, then I'll show you what stuff you can charge with it, and give you some conclusions on why I think this may be the absolute perfect charging solution for any portable needs you have out in the field. So stay tuned and I'll get into it. In this section I'll unpack the Dromax 360 and show you the cables, connectors, and other accessories that come with the unit. Now before I tear into the package, let me just take a minute and talk about the package because I'm very impressed by the fact that the guys at Energen built this really nice carrying case that securely protects the Drone Max 360 and all the cables and accessories you're going to need to both charge the unit and use the unit to charge portable devices out in the field. And that's not something a lot of companies do. More often than not, when you buy a portable charging solution, when you tear open the box and throw away all the plastic and styrofoam that's holding in place, you end up with the unit itself and maybe a couple of specialized cables with connectors that allow you to charge things out in the field. Now the problem there is that I guarantee you in a week's time you're probably going to lose those customized cables and even if you don't, the challenge with the unit itself because it's unprotected means it's going to get dirty and scratched up and banged up out in the field because you don't have a case like this to protect it. So the fact that they built this case and they ship it with the unit for free is a really nice touch. And when I spent some time looking at the case, it's not your standard off-the-shelf kind of case. They could have very easily went to a case company and said, give us a case that's roughly this big to hold the Drone Max and a couple of cables. They didn't do that. They actually built this case specifically for the Drone Max 360, which means it's giving you the ultimate in protection. The outside of the unit is water resistance, nice smooth surface out there. You can use it out in the field and not have to worry about water or dust or sand getting inside there. It's got a heavy-duty zipper with dual tabs on it. Now that seems like a small point, but if you think about it, the cheaper cases have one zipper, so you've got to pull it the entire length of that zipper to open up the case, which means you're wearing it out a lot faster than having a split zipper you can pull down both sides. There are two eyelets on either side. It comes with a shoulder strap, so you can snap that on and carry it over your shoulder. I like to carry it sort of like a lunchbox with the handle. Again, the handle is really comfortable, very heavy-duty setup. So all in all, it's a very nice case. I even like the orange piping on it because when I throw it in the back of my car and I've got a lot of gear back there, it's really easy for me to spot this thing and grab it for a quick charge if I've got something to charge in the field. So let me open her up and show you what it looks like inside. Uh, another nice feature is when you open this thing up, it splits almost in half so it lays flat. And in the top portion of it is, again, all the cables and accessories you need to use the unit. And in the bottom of the unit, you've got the Dromax 360. Not only do they have a really nice nestling uh, section cut out for it to fit in the bottom of the case, but they put these Velcro straps on the top of it so it doesn't get jostled around inside the unit. So they're really trying to protect that unit. So let me open up the top. First thing you're going to see when you open up the top here is a bag with all the cables you'll need to charge the unit and actually charge your batteries off the unit. Again, branded bag, really nice touch. They could have thrown the cables in there and it becomes this rat's nest of cables. You're not sure if you've got them all, so having a bag to organize them is really nice. 
Then you'll see the charger. The charger is a universal switching transformer charger, so you can actually plug this in. Uh, 110, 240 volts. It's 50, 60 hertz. So all you'll need to use this is the correct cable to fit the wall in your country. I'm in the U.S., so I have a standard U.S. cable. Then in the bottom of it is the shoulder strap they talk about. So you can clip that on there and put this thing over your shoulder and carry it around like a messenger bag if you want to do that. So let me pull the Drum Max 360 out. So there are two Velcro straps that are holding it in place. They come off really easy. Then you can lift the unit out. You're good to go. Now, if you look closely in the bottom of this, oh, there's a card in here too. So there's a, a quick start guide that shows you how to charge it and how to use some of the cables that you'll use to charge uh, your drones or other batteries. Now, if you look down in the bottom of this unit, Again, it's not just a well where this thing sits in. They've actually got custom cutouts in the bottom here where these two ears fit into to hold it in place in addition to the Velcro strap. So every aspect of this has been thought through. And I'm sure there's a team of people that worked on putting this case together and they're never gonna get thank yous from the field. So <laughs> let me be the first person to say thank you for spending the time to put this beautiful case together to protect this wonderful charger. So really nice on you guys. Let me sew this thing up and then we'll talk about some of the cables that come with it. Now in the next section I'm going to go through what each of these connectors do and how they fit into the unit, but for now I just want to give you a brief overview so you have a feel for what comes with it. Now when you dump those out, it looks like a rat's nest of connectors there, but again, they're thinking of everything. So they've got a nice Velcro strap here that holds them together, that way they're not jumbling around inside the case. And that's branded Energen as well, so these guys are really doing everything right. Now when I look at the cables, uh, there's a couple of distinct differences between them. So the first cable you're going to notice is this one. This is for the... Um, Mavic batteries and it's got the ability to charge four Mavic batteries at the same time so you can from either one of these front connectors on the bottom you can connect two Mavic batteries to either side and charge up to four of those if you need to at the same time. If you're charging a Phantom 4 battery or Phantom 4 Pro you can charge two of those batteries simultaneously and these are custom connectors again that are used on those front uh, connections on the bottom and I'll show you that in the next section to charge your Phantom 4 batteries. If you have a Phantom 3 you can charge two Phantom 3 batteries at the same time. Now, another thing that's nice about this is that I could be charging different batteries on either side. So I could do a four cell on this side, a three cell on that side. So I, I've got a really uh, wide universe of things that I can use this for simultaneously. This one is a really nice addition. What this does is connect up to the 12 volt outlet up front and provides the ability to charge anything you can use in your car. So if you have a car charger that's charging I don't know, your Spark batteries, your Mavic Air batteries, or any other product, you can plug it in here, plug it in the front, and charge that on this unit. On the back of it, there are two AC outlets back there that provide 120 volts of standard 60 hertz power that you can plug anything into up to, I think it's 150 watts or maybe 200 watts. I'll go through that in the next section, but I haven't found anything yet that I couldn't find some way to connect it up to this to draw electrons off it to actually charge that unit. So everything you need is in one place. And like I said, it all fits inside the unit, which is so nice knowing that when I go out in the field for the afternoon, Everything I need is in one case. I put it up on the shelf when I come home for the day and it's there and ready to go the next time I need it. So that's pretty much a brief overview of what comes with the unit. If you stay tuned now, I'll show you exactly what each of these different connections do on the front and the back and give you some feel for what you can charge off it. And then in the last section, I'll go through charging a bunch of different batteries. I've got a lot of different drones and a lot of different products and I'll spend some time plugging stuff in and showing you how well it charges. So stay tuned for the next section. In this section, I'll give you a tour of the Drone Max 360 and explain all the options you have for charging your portable devices out in the field with this product. But before I get into the nuts and bolts of what connects where and how you actually charge the batteries, I just wanted to take a minute and explain some of the key design features behind the product. Now, the first thing you're going to notice when you pop open the box and drag this thing out is the rubber bumper because it surrounds the entire unit. And when I first saw that, I thought to myself, that seems like overkill. There's a lot of cushioning there for a product this size. But on closer inspection and after having used it for the last couple of weeks, I realized there's a lot of engineering that went into that. That wasn't just by accident, because I like to look at these things as puzzles and think to myself, why did you design it this way? What was the thought behind putting it together like this? And I think I've uncovered a few things. So obviously the first thing it's doing is protecting the internal electronics on this from any kind of shock when you drop this thing, because you're gonna have it out in rugged conditions. You're gonna be out you know, in rocky conditions or maybe hard surfaces, and you're gonna drop the unit. It's gonna happen. And if you drop this and there's no cushioning, all of that shock of that drop is going to get transferred to the internal electronics and it's going to damage them. So having a cushion on the outside means that you can drop it. Don't do it on purpose, but you can drop it and rest assured this will absorb most of that shock and it won't cause damage internally. Okay, so they built two handles in. That's a nice feature because it's a very comfortable way to carry it. I like that. I can carry it from either side. But then I thought about it a little bit more 
I'm gonna have to put this down on the ground when I'm out there. So I'll try and find a dry surface, but even still, laying it down means one surface of this is gonna to be touching that surface. So when I looked at it closer, I realized both ends have a much bigger distance to the end of that rubber. And even the bottom, when you lay it down, there's clearance underneath it. So they've thought of every angle of this, that if I'm gonna use the front connections to charge batteries, the bottom, isn't, the bottom here isn't gonna to touch the ground. And if I flip it around and I wanna use the AC connections, the faceplate's not gonna to touch the ground because if this wasn't here and I didn't have that additional clearance, this would be laying up against whatever surface I put it on. And even if it was dry, I could get gravel and sand or whatever inside there. So having that additional clearance means if I'm charging it on this end using the AC, I can lay it down and not worry about it picking up gravel. It also, has clearance on the bottom and the top. So if I lay it down this way, that little eighth of an inch or quarter of an inch underneath means I've got clearance there for air to get through for additional cooling. And they've done a real good job at the cabinet where I've got aluminum top and bottom. They've got heat fins built in to dissipate the heat because this thing's gonna get hot when you're charging it. It's gonna get hot when you're discharging it and charging some other devices. So having that little extra clearance means it's up off the ground. I get airflow underneath it and the hot air can get out and the cool air can get in to cool it. So they've really thought of everything and it's such a, such a dynamically you know, durable design. They've really built this thing to be almost tank-like in its design. So I like it an awful lot. Now, I'll let you in on a little secret, and please don't tell the company, but when I first got this unit, I was really excited to use it. So I charged it, took it out in the field, and just charged up a bunch of stuff when I was out flying, a bunch of drone batteries and a bunch of other things. I came home, and I needed to charge it again for the next day, and my workshop's down in the basement. So I got to the top of the steps, I set this thing down on the top step, I went to get a cup of coffee, and when I came back, like an idiot, I forgot it was there, I kicked it, and it tumbled down the stairs. So well, you can imagine my panic when I realized I have the only one of these in the US at this point, and I've effectively kicked it down a flight of stairs. So I ran down the stairs, picked it up, shook it off, there was not a scratch on it, took it to the bench, very carefully plugged it in, it charged fine, it discharged fine, I've used it for two weeks past that, and it's working great. So again, don't tell the company, but I'm telling you, it's past the drop test and the kick test. I don't think hazard people put it through those kind of tests. So it works great, and that rubber bumper probably saved it, because if this cabinet didn't have that cushioning, I guarantee you I would have dented the cabinet up and probably damaged the electronics inside. So the next thing I wanna do is go through what each of the connections do and explain how you can use those to charge your batteries. So I'll start in the upper left-hand corner, and I'm gonna put a blow up here so you can see what's going on. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see that's labeled input. That's where you actually charge the unit. So that charger they give you, plug it into the wall, plug it in the unit, and you're off and running. For me, I've charged it probably 15 or 20 times, and I found uh, the longest it took me was about four and a half hours, and that was from a very, very deep discharge. Most of those are done in an hour or two, and I'm back up to full uh, charge on the unit. In the center, you've got a power button there, and the way that works is if you tap it once, you'll see the four bars above it light up. Each of those bars represents obviously a 25% charge. So if you tap it, you can count the number of bars and know how much, how much current's still left in the battery where you can use it for charging in the field. If you wanna turn the unit on, you'll tap it once and then hold it. Once you hold it, it'll strobe through those four different lights above it until it comes fully uh, lit up at the top and you know that it's on and you can use it. To the right of that, you'll see two USB connectors on there. Those are standard USB-A connectors. Now again, what these guys have done is they've really thought this thing through because the USB standard, the USB-A standard, can have a bunch of different charging currents. So most of the chargers you find in the field will charge it like an amp or an amp and a half, or if you're lucky, they'll charge it two amps. This one charges at a full 2.4 amps for both of those connections. And the reason that's important is because if you're taking bigger devices out with you, if it's a, you know, a big tablet or something that requires a lot of current to charge it, you need as much current as you can get. So having 2.4 amps on both of those connections means that there isn't anything you're gonna connect over USB that you can't charge from this particular unit. When I look below that, you'll see two more connections that are USB-C connections. Now, I've talked before about the USB-C connections. Those are the new standard that people are using for a lot of the newer devices. So not a lot of the newer laptops and tablets and phones and stuff use USB-C because you can charge at a higher current rating. So if you've got a USB-C device, you can use both of those together or individually, and you can even combine them with the USB-A connection. So just a lot of different options to charge things up. The other thing I'll point out, which is another small detail that's really important for people that have quick charge devices, is the top connector on the USB-A connections and both of the USB-C connections are QC3 compliant, which is the latest standard for that quick charge uh, technology. So if you've got some of the Android products that use that quick charge technology that allow you to charge it up to 50% of its uh, capacity in a very short order, if you plug it into that top connector or either of those USB-C connections, you'll take advantage of that QC3 standard. So good on them for building that in. Now, I'll look at the bottom next, and if you look in the center, you'll see two switches. 
The one on the left is a three position switch. The one on the right is a two position switch. And just to the outside of those are two dedicated connectors. Those two round connectors are used for charging batteries. So specifically drone batteries. And I'll explain which connector you use for which in a second. But those switches determine what kind of output those two connections have. So if you push those switches to the top, that means you're charging a four cell battery, which would be like a Phantom 4 or a Phantom 3 battery. If you pull those rocker switches to the bottom, you're charging a three cell battery, which would be your Mavic battery. So you have to determine individually if you're connecting a cable up to it, am I charging a three cell battery or four cell battery and make the adjustment there. Now the reason the one on the left has a three position switch is because again, the top is a four cell battery, the bottom is a three cell battery. If you put it in the center position, that activates the 12 volt outlet, which is to the left. And that's the one you use with the car adapter that I showed you when I did the overview in the last section. So you can actually, which is really cool, you can actually charge drone batteries on one side, either a three cell or a four cell, and have this other side be charging 12 volt products in addition to charging the drone batteries, in addition to charging portable devices with the USB. So they give you just a plethora of ways to connect stuff up, to pull the electrons out of this thing to charge whatever portable device you've got. So they've really thought this thing through, but that's how that works. Now, in the next section, I'll show you how you actually connect this up to various uh, drone batteries that are out there or other portable devices and give you a feel for how you can charge those devices. Now, let me flip it over. If I look at the back, you've got two full-size uh, AC outlets on the back that are both grounded and you've got a switch above it that activates those two outlets So if you're going to use any device out there that needs to charge from a standard wall outlet You can plug it into those two units turn it on and you can use those outlets to charge it now You have to be a little bit careful about how much current you draw out of there because those are a bit limited I think they're set up for um, 100 watts 120 watts I'm sorry, and I think a 200 watt maximum which means you can charge pretty much anything out there except a really big inductive load So don't don't plug in like hair dryer or toasters or arc welders to it. It's not going to work with those guys, but pretty much anything small. Like I've tried, I've used it for lamps. Like I was out camping and I had a lamp with me, a house lamp with me, plugged it in. It worked just fine. I had a 75 watt spotlight. It worked on that. So you can use those AC outlets for either of those. Now it's smart enough to know that if you plug something in there like a hairdryer and it's going to draw too much current, there's an LED above it that will typically light up green. And if you violate that policy by plugging something in that's trying to draw too much current out of it, it'll protect you against doing that so it won't damage the unit, but that light will turn red. So you'll know immediately that you've crossed that line, unplug whatever you've got plugged into it, and don't use this to charge it again. So that's pretty much it for the tour. Now, if you stay tuned in the next section, I'm gonna actually go over how you charge various batteries and the different options you've got out there specifically for the DJI brand of products, but I'm gonna also show you Parrot and a bunch of other things that I, I use out in the field. And I've charged all of these things with this product over the last couple of weeks and I haven't had a single problem with it so for my money this is a really cool product so stay tuned and I'll show you that charging to start with I'd like to show you the proper procedure for powering up the unit and that's done through this button in the center now the button actually has two functions if I tap it momentarily it'll tell me what the current charge level of the unit is through the LEDs above it. Each of those LEDs represents 25% charge. So if I tap that button and all four are lit up, I know I'm fully charged. If I tap it and only two light up, I've got a 50% charge on the unit. Now I use the same button to turn this guy on. The way I do that is to tap it and then hold it down. Once you hold it down, you notice all the lights will go off, the left one will come on and it'll march its way up to the top one. When all four are lit, you can let go and they'll stay lit. Now I will caution you that the unit is really smart and if there's no load, meaning I've got nothing connected to it that I'm gonna charge, it'll sit there for a couple of seconds and then it'll actually turn off because it's trying to conserve the internal power. So what I like to do is before I actually turn it on, adjust these two switches for the type of batteries that I'm gonna connect and then I connect those at least one battery up and then turn it on, that way I've got a load to keep this thing awake. Now, these two switches determine what the charge level is for these particular ports. So this switch controls that port this switch controls that port, and you've really got a choice between a four cell battery and a three cell battery. Now, since these are Phantom 4 batteries, they're a four cell battery. The Phantom 3 is a four cell battery. The Mavic is a three cell battery. So in this case, I wanna make sure both of these switches are to the up position or the four cell setting. Then I'll connect up the cable to it. Now the cable's got a flat spot on the top. That should point up, because it's keyed. So once I slide that in there, I'll connect it up to the battery, and I'll tap this once, and then I'll hold it and watch the LEDs pop off, and then they'll march their way up, and I'll hold the battery up so you can see it. And you can see when it gets to that top LED, it's already charging the battery. Now I've got a load on this, it's gonna stay awake and charge this. When the battery's fully charged, 
it'll turn off just like it would on the normal charger, and this unit will turn off. So it doesn't stay on if it's not charging something. Now if I want to charge that second battery, I just connect up the second cable, connect it up to the back of the battery, and in a couple of seconds it'll wake up, and you can see that they're both charging. So both of those will charge simultaneously. When they're both fully charged, the charger itself will actually turn off. Now, here's the cool thing. If I decide maybe this guy's fully charged because it didn't need as much current to actually get it set, I can disconnect this guy. And let's say, for example, I was flying a Phantom 3 as well or had a friend with me for a Phantom 3. I can use the cable for the Phantom 3, which looks like this. Connect it up. Actually, let me connect it to the battery first. So you can see the prongs slide up inside the battery. Then connect it up to the charger, and it'll start charging because again, it's a four cell battery. So when I look at the two of them, you can see that they're both charging now. And that's interesting because they're dramatically different batteries, but the charger is smart enough to know that it's got the right voltage and right current to charge both those units. Now when they're done again, it'll turn off. So the only thing I wanted to mention at the end of this is to turn this guy off, you'll reverse the procedure. So when you're, if you decide you want to turn it off, maybe you've decided you want to put it back in your car and uh, you want the unit to be powered off, you'll actually hold this button, you'll tap it again, and hold it, and you'll see those LEDs march down. And when they blink out, it's totally powered off. And you can see in a couple of seconds, this will actually turn off as well. There you go. So that's pretty much it for every battery you're gonna connect. Now, the Mavic is a three cell battery, and I'm gonna do that next, and then I'll show you a whole lot of other products that you can charge with this. Now I'll show you how to charge your Mavic Pro batteries on the Drone Max 360. And it's a very similar procedure. The big difference is that the Mavic Pro batteries are three cell batteries, which means you'll have to make adjustment to these switches for whichever port you decide to charge the batteries from. And in this case, these ports will support two three cell batteries at a time. And you can see the connector's got a dual connection on the end of it. So in this case, I'm gonna charge all four of these simultaneously. So I'm gonna set both of these switches down to the three cell position. Now, before I turn it on, just like last time, I wanna make sure I connect up at least one battery. So I've got a load on the charger. So when it powers up, it sees a battery that it's charging and it stays on. So now that the battery's connected up, let me tap it once and hold it. And you'll see it walk through that strobe from the left to the right and now it's powered up. And you can see it's already charging the battery. You'll also notice since I slid it down to the three position, you can see the orange LED is on. If I slide it back up to the four position, the green LED is on. So it gives you a visual indicator of where that switch is because sometimes if it's dark, it's hard to see the switch. Okay, so they're both down in the three position. Let me charge the second battery at the same time. So let me connect up the second guy and you should see it wake up the minute I make the connection. Now I've got two batteries charging simultaneously. There you go. Now the cool thing is, and I don't like to let these hang, but I will for a second, is that I can connect up another set of batteries to the other connector over here. So here's the third battery. That should light up as soon as I get the connection on it. There you go. And here's the fourth battery. Now this is incredible that I can actually take five batteries or six batteries with me for the Mavic, which means I could be flying with a fresh battery and charging up to four batteries while I'm flying with that fresh battery and really have an unlimited supply of batteries out there in the field. But what makes this even cooler is that since I'm charging my Mavic Pro batteries on here, a lot of times I fly with friends that fly different quads than I do. So let's say I'm flying with somebody that's got a Phantom 4 to fly. I can actually be charging my Mavic batteries in this port change this to a four cell battery setting on this one and plug in the connector for his Phantom 4 battery. And that way I can charge my Mavic batteries. They can charge their Phantom 4 batteries at the same time. And if we have phones or tablets to charge, I can plug them in here or down here and be charging those in addition. So this really is like a very versatile charger that allows me to pretty much charge anything I'm bringing along for that afternoon. A lot of you on the channel have asked whether the Drone Max 360 can charge batteries other than the Phantom or the Mavic. So for example, if you bought a brand new Mavic Air, is there a way for me to charge this Mavic Air battery directly from the unit? And the honest answer is there isn't yet a cable that connects up this port with the bottom of this battery. But remember, on the bottom, you've got two full-sized AC outlets down there. Now the way you turn these on is just flip that switch. You don't have to mess with the front, it could be totally off up there. Once you hit that switch, that green light will come on. That indicates that these outlets are live and that you're not drawing too much current. If you plug something in there, like a hair dryer, the red light's going to come on and it's going to shut off. But as long as the green light's on, that means you can use those outlets. So I thought, why don't I take the charger from home, connect it up to the battery, go out in the woods, turn this guy on, and then plug that charger into the back of the unit. 
I wonder what's going to happen. Let's watch that battery. So it takes a couple of seconds to realize it's being charged, and then it turns on. So I thought, okay, cool. The short answer is, yes, I can charge my Mavic Air batteries by using these outlets on the back. But I could charge four Mavic batteries at the same time. So I wonder if I took the hub with me, if I could connect this guy up to the hub, like this. And what happens when I plug a battery into the hub? Well. Of course you'd expect one to light up, right? So the hub's gonna think about it a second. It's gonna search out the battery and find that this one needs the least amount of charge. It's gonna start charging. But that's not that cool. What if I put a second battery in there, what happens? So when I add the second battery, it's gonna go back into its routine to check which needs to charge. And it may change. Let's see, it's thinking about it. Nope, it's staying with that battery. Let me try a third battery. So when I add the third battery to it, Again, it's going to go into its routine to check to see which battery needs the least amount of charge. You'll know that because it's blinking. Let's see if it changes. Nope, it's sticking with that battery. So let me put the fourth one in. Now I've got four batteries in the hub at this point, and it's going to have to go through its routine again to see which battery needs the least amount of charge. Because remember, it's going to go through a round-robin assessment and find the battery that needs the least charge. In this case, it's sticking with this one. So I was just lucky that the first battery I put in was the one that needed the least amount of charge. None of these others are lit up. But just to prove that, let me actually yank that battery out. And now it's going to go back into its routine, look for the next least charge battery, and it's going to start charging that one. So it's moved to this guy. So let me pull that guy out and see where it goes next. It's doing the routine again. It's checking both of them and it found this battery. So what it's doing for you is exactly what you do at your home charger. It's looking for the batteries that are in there. It's finding the one that needs the least amount of charge. It's charging that first, then it moves on to the next one and the next one. So when all four of these are done, they'll all shut off and you'll have fully charged batteries. So for me in the field, having the hub with me means that I can charge up to four Mavic Air batteries simultaneously just by using this outlet on the back of the unit, which is perfect. So when I'm out flying, this thing fixes my problem about recharging my Mavic batteries. We had a few questions about using the Drone Max to charge spark batteries, and you actually have a couple of options there. So the easiest way would be to use a cable to connect the front port to the bottom of the battery directly, but that's not available yet. Uh, I know they're working on it, but there's some engineering challenges around stepping down that voltage to marry up with exactly what the spark needs to charge. But in the meantime, you have two options. The first one is using this front 12 volt port on here. I'd mentioned that it comes with an umbilical that'll turn this into a standard outlet like you'd find in your car. The only thing you have to adjust there is that this switch on this side, you switch between a four cell battery and a three cell battery. This actually has a middle position which activates that 12 volt outlet. So if you're gonna use this to charge a Mavic or a Phantom battery, you'll set it correctly for whatever battery you're charging. But if you wanna use this outlet, you wanna have it in the center position. Now, in the minute I turn this on, you'll see the blue light light up, which means you're in the center position, but you still have to have a load on it. So if you happen to have a spark car charger, you can plug it in here, connect it up to the bottom of the battery, just like you would in your car, and then you're off and running. You're off to the races. Let me get that on the right way. There we go. And I'll turn this guy on. Again, I tapped it and hold it. It'll march up. And you can see the blue lights on there so you know you got it in the center position and the battery wakes up and starts charging. So I thought, well, that's really great, but currently I can charge four Mavic batteries at the same time. I wonder if there's a way for me to charge more than one Spark battery at the same time. Well, actually there is. So let me disconnect this, turn this guy off. So again, I just tap it and hold it. It'll walk back down to zero. So the way you wanna charge more than one Spark battery is to use the charging hub if you have that which came with the Flymore package, on the back. So I'll turn on the back. I've got my charging hub for my Spark. I'll plug that into the back of the unit, and then I can add the batteries to the hub. So let me throw the first one in and see what happens. There's the first battery right away. Starts charging. Takes a second for it to realize there's a battery in there. Let me try the second battery. There's number two. Woke up and it's starting to charge. Let me put the third guy in. There's the third battery. It's gonna wake up and start charging. So I'm showing you that on the back of this unit, if I put AC in here through the uh, home adapter, it's gonna go through and charge these batteries just like it would at home. And again, the nice part is, it'll charge them till they're full. 
when they're full, it'll shut off just like it would at home for you. So it's a very smart way to go about it. And this allows me to take three Spark batteries with me and charge them simultaneously in the field just by using either one of these outlets on the back of this product. Now that I've shown you how easy it is to charge the batteries for your DJI products with the Drone Max 360, I thought I'd test out some other gear that you may have a need to recharge when you're out in the field for a day of flying. And I fly a wide variety of different quads, so I had to make sure I could charge other manufacturers' batteries as well with the unit. In front of me, I've got a Parrot Bebop 2 battery, which is a quad that I fly quite often, and I have a whole lot of fun putting that thing up in the air, but I find I have to recharge these batteries when I'm out in the field. Now, it'd be great if I could just connect up the Parrot Bebop battery to one of these two ports on the front with a cable, but they don't yet make a cable that'll connect those two up. Now, they may be working on that, and I totally understand that the first set of cables they came out with were for the DJI products, because they're kind of king of the hill in the drone market at this point, but I expect they're probably working on some connection between these to the Parrot. But in the meantime, the option I use to charge that is on the back of the unit, I have two full-size AC connections right here. So if I take the original charger that came with the Parrot Bebop and connect that up to the battery, and then connect up the charger to one of these two AC connections, and turn the unit on, in a second you'll see the charger come on red. And that's indicating that it's charging the battery. Now I've been out flying all day with this battery, so it's almost completely depleted. It's gonna take quite a long time to charge. But I've done this in the field multiple times and it works great. The beauty is that I can be charging a Parrot Bebop battery on the back. I can use one of the front ports or both the front ports for like a Phantom or a Mavic battery. I can connect up tablets and controllers and a bunch of other stuff to the USB connections all at the same time. So it really shows you that this isn't really made just for DJI products. It's really made to charge anything you need out in the field that you can connect up through one of those ports that I'd mentioned. In this last example, I'd like to show you just how versatile and robust the Drone Max 360 charger can be in a real life situation. Because on any given day, I have a wide variety of things I need to charge, and oftentimes I have to charge multiple items at the same time. So I thought, let me start plugging stuff into it and show you just how many products you can actually charge simultaneously. So let's pretend for a second I'm out flying and my DJI goggles are getting a little low on power and I've got to charge those. Now we all know that you charge it through the micro USB connection over here. So let me take a standard USB-A connection, make it to the bottom connection on the Drone Max, and connect up the other connector to the goggles. Now, if I turn this unit on, because I've got a load on that port, it should actually start charging pretty soon when it gets close to top. So now it's climbing up, and all of a sudden the goggles are charging. So I've actually connected it to the charger and I'm charging my goggles. Now that's pretty cool. But what if I'm flying with a friend and he comes running over and says, hey Rick, I got a Mavic Air, I need to charge my controller, this thing's almost dead, can you help me out? Well sure, I can charge that. Let's see if I can plug it in and see what happens. So I take another USB-A connection, make the connection above it, I go into the side of this guy through a micro USB connection over here. Once I make the connection, holy smokes, it's lit up. So I'm actually charging the goggles and this Mavic Air controller at the same time. So that's, that's pretty neat. Now, what if in addition to that, I have another friend who's flying with us and he's got an Osmo out there and he comes up to me and says, hey, my Osmo battery's dead, can you help me out? Well, yeah, I can, because I can set this thing down. I can turn on the AC connection on the back, right there. And now once that's on, I can actually connect up the charger from the Osmo to one of those AC connections on the back. Once I do that, you can see the charger's lit up. If I then take his Osmo battery and slide it in there, it'll start charging the Osmo battery. So there you go. So now I've got an Osmo battery charging. So that's not enough yet. I've got another buddy who's flying a Phantom 4 product. I guess I have too many friends, but they all know I have this brand new Drone Max 360. So he comes running over with a Phantom 4 battery and says, hey, can you charge my Phantom 4 battery? Well, yep, I can. There's a port on the front that's not being used right now. And I've got it set for four cell connections. So let me connect this guy up and see what happens. So the minute I plug him in, it takes a couple seconds for it to recognize there's a battery on there. But simultaneous, I'm charging the goggles, the controller, an Osmo battery, and boom, that's gonna come on in a second and start charging that battery as well. Isn't that amazing that all of these products can simultaneously be connected up to this Drone Max 360, and it'll continue to charge these products until it runs out of internal power. And that's just one example of all the stuff that I've done out in the field. I still have ports on the front that I can connect for the USB-C. I've got another major port up front that I can connect up, Mavic batteries or another phantom battery too. I've got an outlet on the back that's still open. So you can actually charge a lot of different products simultaneously out in the field. And again, that's the beauty of the product is its flexibility and versatility 
when you have a charging need out in the field. In this final section, I'd like to give you a little perspective on the company behind the Drone Max 360 and offer my honest opinion of the product after having used it for the past couple of weeks. Now, it should come as no surprise to any of you guys that I'm a gigantic geek, which means any chance I get to play with new technology is a really good day for me. And I've been lucky over the years that occasionally companies will contact me and say, we've got a pre-production model of this new thing we're releasing. We'd like to send it to you for you to review it. And I'm going to say yes every time. More often than not, when that product arrives and I open up the box, the first thing I see inside that box is a letter from their legal team with terms and conditions about what I can review, what I should say about the product, what I shouldn't test on the product. And sometimes they're okay because stuff isn't quite finished yet because they're pre-production models. But a lot of times they're so restrictive where I'm thinking to myself, I can't do an honest review of the product, so I'll fold the box back up, put a return label on it, ship it back to the company and say thanks anyway. So when this product arrived, again, a pre-production model, I open up the box. There's no letter. I looked under the product. There's no letter. So I thought, let me just be safe because I know they only shipped a couple of these things out worldwide. Let me send them an email and say, hey, I got the unit today. Is there anything about it I should know or things you want me to stay away from in the review? And I don't think it was an hour later and I got a reply back and it basically said, no, just test the unit. Take it out in the field. Beat it up. Let us know what you think about it. So I thought to myself, man, those guys are really proud of this product and they must have done extensive testing before they ever sent it out to a geek like me that's going to actually put it through paces. Do I have to remind you I kicked this thing down a flight of stairs? So everything I've done with this product has worked flawlessly and it's been my constant companion for the last couple of weeks. I'll get up in the morning fully charged. I take it with me for the day. Some of those days I'm going out to fly and it's a long day and I need to recharge a battery. Hook it up, it'll charge the battery. While I'm charging that battery, I can charge a tablet, a phone, a battery bank. If I'm out camping or hiking and I need a little extra light, I can plug a light in the back and light up the backyard. It's done everything I've asked it to do and there hasn't been a product I've found yet that I couldn't charge with it as long as I followed the specifications on what the boundaries of that charging capabilities were. It's just worked flawlessly. And again, I know hazard testing takes place at a company. I doubt seriously that 12 steps, being kicked down 12 steps as part of that hazard testing, but I dropped this thing from a pretty good height down those steps, plugged it in and it worked again. No, no trouble whatsoever with it. So. From my perspective, home run on a product. It's absolutely reliable, it's resilient, it does what they say it's gonna do, and I like it an awful lot. But then I put my engineer hat on and I said, all right, if I'm gonna build this product, do I like the way they put it together? Is the packaging right? Did they really think through the technology? And again, I've given you some examples of that, but the fact that they include a beautiful carrying case like this that's built to protect it, carry all the extra accessories with it, is such a nice afterthought that really tells me the company cares about their customers and they want to protect this product and give you the longest life possible out of it. I spent a little bit of time talking about the rubber bumper and how it's a protective mechanism if you drop it, but it's also built because they thought through the fact that you're going to stand it up and put it down on wet surfaces and those bumpers keep it from touching those wet surfaces. They also give you additional clearance underneath so it's not going to get hot and there's plenty of ventilation. All that stuff, again, from an engineering perspective, means that there are teams working on this that care about what you think and care about a product being really, really resilient. And I don't have to remind you that Energen is not new to this business. There's a lot of Johnny-come-latelys that are getting into this portable battery bank business. These guys have had a history of building products for quite a long time that have delivered exactly what they say they're going to do. I own a bunch of those products, and they've made very specific chargers for a lot of the larger drones that are out there today. They've built uh, battery banks that can jumpstart your car. They've got home chargers now that'll fast charge your drone battery. So they're deep in the engineering behind this. And my suspicion is they're an independent company right now but if I were one of the bigger drone companies, these are a company, these guys are a company that I'd want to own. So as they continue to mature, they roll all those advancements into the latest versions of their products. And to me, this Drone Max 360 is really the granddaddy of all the chargers they've built before. And I've used the term Swiss Army knife for chargers. This thing will charge everything you bring out in the field with you without exception. As long as you follow the boundaries of what it can charge, you're gonna have no problems with it. So I can completely recommend this product as a wonderful product. Now, as far as the company goes, I deal with a lot of different technology companies and sometimes they're very insulated. And when you send them a message, you get something back that's really cryptic and they don't want to talk about certain aspects of it. I've had a running dialogue with this company and several engineers at the company. They're very open to suggestions. They're open to feedback. Um, one of the things I brought up when I first started testing their products was you built this Mavic charger. Wouldn't it be cool if you put cables together to charge the Spark at the time in the Mavic Air since then? And they were like, you know what? That's a great idea. We're going to do that. So they're off developing cables to charge your Spark to take that one charger you bought for your Mavic 
and expand its use to other drones that you may happen to own. And that, to me, is the mark of a great company. So I like the company, I like the product. For my money, hands down, the best portable charger you can buy today. And I know a lot of people look at this and they think, oh, it's a very expensive charger. Wouldn't that be smarter buying a couple of extra batteries? And that's your call. I can't tell you what works for you, but buying those extra batteries means I can use them for the drone. Buying something like this means I can use it for everything. So for me, this is a smarter purchase. Even though I carry extra batteries with me, I like having a charger that I can charge those batteries in the field. So enough about that. So I've tried to give you all the information you need to understand what this product's about and help you make a decision of whether it'll fit in your kit or not. Totally up to you if you do that. But if I've missed anything or you have questions about anything I've described today, please drop those questions in the comments below. I promise to get back to you as quickly as I can. I also really like the feedback. So if you like these kind of reviews and you like the way this thing went, let me know that as well. If I've done something wrong, put them down in the comments and let me know why you're giving me a thumbs down because it's so frustrating to see those thumbs down and not really know what I did wrong. Um, I'll also put a link down below where you can go to their site and you can check out the product yourself and you can get all the information you need to understand if it's a good product for you to own. But that's pretty much it for today. So I really appreciate you guys watching these clips. I love putting them together. I love testing technology like this. I'll continue to do this as long as you guys find value in the clips. And I can tell that by your comments below and the thumbs up I get for it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, if you're new here, please hit the subscribe button and join the Drone Valley family. I have a ton of new clips coming on a myriad of different drones that are out there and a bunch of other high-tech gear. So stay tuned to the channel if you want to see some of that stuff. So again, that's pretty much it for today. Thanks an awful lot for watching. And until next time, happy flying. Mm -hmm.